Your breathing directly affects your nervous system and determines whether you feel agitated or grounded and centered throughout the day. There are three most important factors that we need to consider. The length of your breathing cycle in general, which is inhalation plus exhalation, then the length and proportional length between inhalation and exhalation, which one is longer and by how much, and the location of the breath, where you feel the breath in your body. So let, today let's take a closer look at location. If throughout the day you primarily feel your breathing in your chest, it is more likely to be shorter and more rapid, and it usually points to the fact that your diaphragm, the primary respiratory muscle that attaches to the bottom of your ribcage, is shaped like a dome, and with every inhalation it flattens and moves downwards, and with every exhalation it returns to its neutral shape as a dome. So if you're primarily feeling your breathing in your chest, it usually points to the fact that your diaphragm doesn't move much or it stays in a sort of contracted, tightened state, which is really not good in the long term because since diaphragm is a muscle, it basically means that it might lose its elasticity and its ability to move properly through the full range of motion. So when we want to work with breath and through the breath affect our nervous system, it is very important for us that the diaphragm moves through its full range of motion. And you will hear people talk about full diaphragmatic breathing, which points to that. There's also a, a lively ongoing discussion in the yoga community about the directionality of the breath, whether we should breathe, uh, inhale from chest to belly or inhale from belly to chest and exhale from belly to chest or vice versa. But what is even more important is what's happening with your rib cage, how your rib cage moves, because this the movement of your rib cage points to the movement of the diaphragm, to what your diaphragm is doing. So to have nice, steady, consistent diaphragmatic breathing, we need to ensure that your rib cage flares outwards, that the bottom part of the rib cage flares outwards in this kind of motion. This will indicate to us the diaphragm is working properly throughout the breath cycle. So this is what we'll practice today. So go ahead and place your hands on the bottom of your rib cage, kind of like so you can feel your bottom ribs and kind of cradle your rib cage with your hands. Keep your shoulders relaxed, close your eyes. Inhale through your nose and as you do, Focus on flaring your ribs outwards. Sense it and then slowly deflate. And sense your ribs moving inwards toward the center. And continue to breathe like that. On the inhale, emphasize the flaring out of the bottom part of your rib cage. And then as you exhale, deflate and release. Next time, as you inhale, gently inflate your chest, then flare out your ribs, the bottom part of the ribcage, and then expand your belly a bit. And with the exhalation, deflate your belly, deflate your ribcage, and then deflate your chest. And let's continue to breathe like that. Inflate your chest, Flare out your ribs, the bottom part. Expand your belly a bit. Don't stick it out, just make it full. As you exhale, deflate your belly. Relax your rib cage and deflate your chest. And go ahead and take three more breath cycles like that. Focus on the movement of the rib cage. And if you want to, you can envision the action of the diaphragm, the dome shape. And 
Every time you inhale and flare out your rib cage, the dome flattens downward a bit as your lungs expand. And as you exhale and deflate your rib cage, the dome rises as your lungs deflate. And this is the movement that we want to emphasize when we focus on full diaphragmatic breathing. 